Hey divas, I wanted to give my perspective on natural hair and coloring, rinsing, dyeing, anything to basically alter the color of your hair. I know a lot of naturals already touched on the subject, but I wanted to give my perspective, being that I've dyed my hair plenty of times prior to being natural, as well as dyeing it while I'm natural. So let's get started. So many people feel that once you dye your hair, it's not considered being natural because you alter basically the pigment of your color in your hair and they feel that by dyeing your hair it's you know harmful to your hair but I want to give you guys my first hand knowledge and let you know that that is not necessarily true every person is different on the way they treat their hair if they're, if they're relaxed, they're natural or anything in between when it comes to the care for their hair that all makes a difference whether you know their hair breaks, any problems like that I have to say that I have dyed my hair and many of the times I've done it on my own. I have not got a professional to do it, nor have I bleached or did any of those drastic things with my hair. Right now, my hair is dyed. Um, the last time that I did do my dye was about, I think, January or February. And prior to that, I did it December, which was the first time I did it on my natural state. And in January, I just basically touched up my roots and I left the color on my ends alone. Right now, I've had no problem as far as hair growth because as you can see, compared to videos, my earlier videos, to now, my hair has flourished and has grown. Many of the things that have added to the continuum factors of my hair growing is the fact that I have religiously hot oil treatment my hair as well as doing deep conditioners. And I haven't really stuck to just one deep conditioner. I have maybe five or six. And with my hot oil treatments, I do it myself. I don't necessarily typically buy you know, you can go to a beauty supply and you can get grapeseed oil and just, you know, Pantene Pro-V VO5 oil or any of those oils that you typically can buy for a one-time use application. I basically have essential oils lined up on my dresser and when I feel the need to do a hot oil treatment, I will just get a little cup, mix it all together and just warm it up and do my hot oils. So I believe that's what the factor is. Um, as far as when bleaching, I feel if you do decide to bleach, you just have to be costly the same way with dyeing. I haven't bleached my hair. Um, reason for not really bleaching my hair has to do with the fact that I've had a cousin. She was completely natural. She's never received a perm her whole life. So basically, she was natural from the time of birth till the time that she decided to dye her hair, which was, I'd say maybe four or five years ago. She decided she wanted to dye her hair to go to Miami, and because she has a natural dark hair just like me, um, dyeing it would not do justice to the color she wanted. She wanted bleach, blonde streaks throughout her hair. So she decides to get it bleached. She goes to the hair salon, and they do bleaching a majority of the front. She didn't do it in the back. She just did like the crown of the front. So basically, when she got it done, she loved it instantly and decided she's going to keep it and maintain it. Well, push comes to shove, and I guess you can say that she lacked on maintaining the color and the ends dried. She had continuous breakage around the crown of her head to the point where she had to let it all grow out, and once it did grow out, she had to cut it. So that's one of the reasons why I said when I do decide to do a color to my hair, I won't be bleaching it, I will be dyeing it. Um, I was going to be doing another color for my hair because I'm turning 25 next month and I decided I wanted to do, you know, black with some brownish, blondish, not too blonde, but like a honey hue of brown streaks throughout my hair. Um, the reason why I did not do that is I have decided to just let my color grow out. Um, the color I have now, which is basically, um, I think it's Clairol Essence or Dark and Lovely, I'm not too sure. I'll put the information on the description but it's um, one of those little you know kits you can buy from your local Walgreens, CVS, Target, anything like that and it's um, a Red Hot Rhythm that's the name of it, Red Hot Rhythm and I've just basically grown out of the color when I first originally did my Big Chop my hair was really low um, the color complemented my skin tone so I really really loved it as my hair grew out and you can basically see I'm going to take my head off you can see this is all the new growth and this is the color if you can see it so I decided to just let it grow out I just 
I am as my hair got longer I just felt the need that I wasn't really loving it the way I originally did when I big top and I just feel natural should you know experiment with color whether it being rinse or when you big chop because when you big chop there's not much you can do with the hair so a little splash of color does give it a little life to it so it made it easier with the color for me to basically enjoy the growth and the growing process so I just did the color but as it grew and I got into my sixth month my seventh and now my eighth month I decided I just don't want to do it anymore so once all of this color does leave, which is a majority of it, I will be doing the black with the streaks that I originally wanted. But I won't be bleaching, I will be doing a dye. And that will be it. Um, once that does happen, that will be the new journey I will be uploading, which will be my healthy color journey. So I know a lot of naturals really want, are curious about color. And maybe if you had somebody to implement the do's and don'ts of coloring and show you different styles you can do with coloring, different ways to care for it, you may be, you know, swaying towards doing the color. But like I said, I think the, the most important thing is just maintaining your color, keeping it moisturized. I basically have like a regiment down to the T of what I do to my hair. I'm going to go right now. Give me like two seconds. I'm going to go get my deep conditioners my spritz bottle and I'm going to explain everything as far as with the regimen. So give me like two seconds. I'm a product donkey. So I'll tell you that. So anywho, these are a majority of the stuff that I use. I have some more stuff but I'm going to just show you the main stuff. My hair mayonnaise, I use this religiously. Religiously. I use it maybe every other week and I do this for my hair regimen. This has done so much wonders to my hair when I first, you know, dyed it. And it's keep it moisturized. Right now my hair is like a little dry. It has to do with the humidity. It is so hot right now in New York. And I've been so lazy. I haven't been doing my two strand twists the way I want to. So, you know. But anyway, that's a different topic. Now, I love this. This is Mega Growth Perfective Deep Strengthening Grow Conditioner. And I know a lot of people are probably like, what does it do? It basically the, has essential oils in it, you know, olive oil, flaxseed oil, jojoba oil, coconut, avocado, grapeseed. And what it does is it strengthens the hair. Like you can see the picture, the comparison picture of the before and after. And it basically restores the strength in your hair. It helps with over processing, heating, over styling, and etc, etc. And with this, I've gone through at least two or three since my natural journey. And it has really, really helped my hair. And I just love it. It's just amazing stuff. And last but not least, you know, the Shea Moisture Deep Treatment Mask is what, you know, I live by. I've used this since going, you know, into my natural journey and it has helped. But what I can't live without minus all those, is my spritz bottle. I actually spritz my hair, and you'll see the difference once I spritz it, and work it in. <laughs> and I do this in the morning and I do it at night, even if I have, you know, a blowout, twist, twist, twist out, whatever I may have. I do that and it restores my hair and it it takes you know the dryness out because it has the essential oils in it as well as conditioner and by doing this I'm able to see the difference when my hair is dry you know I walk around with a small spritz bottle in my bag if I feel like like let's say for instance I work from 8 to 3 and I go to school immediately after and don't get home till 9 so in between those hours I like for my hair to feel like it has some, you know, moisture in it. So the spritz bottle is an instant moisture. And this is one of the herbal oils I use to do hot oil. So as long as I use this, I will have no problem. So I feel, you know, being more educated is the key thing to making sure that your color and your dyes and your bleach or everything you do to your hair that alters the hair color does not over process, does not break, does not have any problems. I have no problems with my color. So if any of you divas feel that you know you want to do a color, you're a little skeptical, you don't know what to do, 
hit me up on my inbox, leave a comment. I will be sure to get back to you. And check out, you know, the hundreds of naturals who do have color. And many of them, you know, give great advice. When I first decided to dye my hair, I was looking at Ariel, um, I think Miss Ariel 89, I think that's her name. And, you know, Candy Loves You. And those were my two naturals who were colored, who I said, you know what? Their hair is healthy. Their hair is lovely. Why not do it to me? So that's the big key factor. Just making sure you're fully educated on what you need, do's and don'ts. So I will be back. I'm probably going to go try to see if I can find some, you know, do's and don'ts for a hair color and upload it for you guys tonight. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.